an exciting new item. If you suffer from chronic migraines, you've probably gotten the advice to take a hot bath and do some journaling before you go to bed. And while, yeah, <laughs> and while yes, those things can be nice to do before bed, let's face it, that's not the most practical solution for an actual nighttime routine for a busy mom who gets chronic migraines. It's just not. And for me as a migraine mama, it's not necessarily because of the time, although that's sometimes a factor but it's also about the energy that it takes and the spoons. It's so stimulating and then I also need a shower after. So it's just not realistic. So today I'm excited to share with you a gentle but effective bedtime routine that does help me find relief but also doesn't totally drain my energy. This routine is flexible enough for migraine and motherhood but still consistent enough to gently guide me into a restful night's sleep. And of course, we'll be mentioning a special tool in our arsenal, which is Cephaly, a game changer for managing chronic migraines. Let's get to it. If you're new here, by the way, hi, I'm Jen. How rude. This portion of the video is sponsored by Cephaly. Yes, the Freaking Cephaly. <sighs> I will tell you about how the device works now, and then later on as we're going through my bedtime routine, I will show you how it seamlessly fits into the routine without adding any extra time to it. And yes, I have a discount code for you. But first, I have two little fangirl stories for you that I, I don't know, I just thought you guys might find interesting. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I guess because it's relevant. Well, I have been using Cephaly. It's actually right behind you. Since 2018. This is my old Cephaly. Look at it. And the first fun story about the Cephaly is that when I started my whole channel and my blog and everything, and I actually had a Pinterest at the time, the only pin that I put up was about Cephaly. And then I dropped that. I decided to become a YouTuber before I ever... That's a side story. But yeah. Cephaly was the actual first thing that I decided to share when I decided I wanted to be a migraine influencer. I hate the word influencer. Super interesting. Fun story number two, I never in a million years thought that I would actually become a partner for Cephaly, but about a year or maybe two years ago, I actually got reached out to by a competing device company, and I turned them down before we even got into negotiations because I'm already a Cephaly user. So fast forward, oh, and let me show you the new one. New one's different. Come on, focus, 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 there we go. The new one is prettier, it honestly feels better, and it's Bluetooth connected, and a bunch of other things, but I digress again, where are we? <laughs> Here's the science behind Cephaly. People with migraine have hyperactive nervous systems. We just overreact to certain stimuli, and that causes a lot of our neurological pain and dysfunction. The trigeminal nerve, which is a multi-branch nerve in your face, I like to go like this to show kind of where it is, is thought to be the primary pathway for migraine pain. Cephaly is an FDA-cleared migraine treatment device that works by neuromodulation. It's very similar to a TENS unit, and it's basically this sticky jelly electrode that you stick on your clean forehead, and the device that does the stimulating connects to it magnetically. It is so simple to use. The device externally stimulates the trigeminal nerve with a precise electrical impulse. There are two modes, so you can either acutely stop your migraine attack as it's coming on, just like when you take an abortive medication, or you can use it daily to prevent attacks. I obviously recommend using a combination of both depending on what kind of migraine day you're having. If it's a good day, just do your prevent treatment. If you're having a migraine day, you can do your cephaly treatment at the same time as you take your normal abortive medication, or instead of it. Because again, there is that abort setting. The prevent setting is one that you use every day, and that works by stimulating and desensitizing the trigeminal nerve over time. So that's something that you do daily, and you start to see results after two or three months. Just like basically any other migraine medication, but this one is not a prescription. Since it does take two to three months of stimulation to get that desensitization, Cephaly stands behind their device with a 90-day guarantee. I have two more interesting notes about Cephaly. First, 
Cephaly is safe and effective with no serious adverse events reported on any clinical study. And two, no prescription needed. No prescription needed. And bonus three, they do have payment plans. So at last, you can treat your migraine attacks without that nasty grogginess, side effects, and all sorts of other things that come with some of those medications that we've all loved. And like I said before, it adds virtually no time to the bedtime routine. So let me know in the comments below if you've tried it or if you'd like me to make a whole dedicated video on it. But in the meantime, go check out my link and get your 15% off of your Cephaly device. Don't let migraine keep you from doing the things you love. Oh my gosh, in between takes, I just had this flashback to when I was in Taekwondo, but I was getting migraines. I would go to college. After college, I would go to Taekwondo, get there early, and lay there in the office because I was dating the instructor. He's my husband now. I would go lay in the office and do my cephaly immediately before my Taekwondo class so that I would be able to get through my Taekwondo class. I miss Taekwondo. Okay, um, let's get to the bedtime routine. Okay, migraine mama. If we want less stress, less migraines. Wow, there's a studio light in the frame. Oh, we're friends. Okay. If we want less migraines, we need to nail the basics. And I did make a whole video about that. I'll put a card here. But doing a good morning routine and a good night routine are great ways to set up the beginning and the end of your day for success in managing your own stress. So how can we regulate our circadian rhythm with that super important bedtime routine without adding 60 steps and a bath and a mocktail and journaling with hands that don't even work? So congratulations, the kids are in bed. It is your turn to do your bedtime routine. Step number one, my step number one, is get yourself and your environment comfortable. The first step in our gentle nighttime routine is to prioritize your own comfort. Put on your favorite pajamas, maybe slippers and or compression socks. I have a couple of sweaters that are the material of blankets that I like. I also like a couple of blankets that are very vaguely cut like sweaters. These are the kinds of things that I do wear during the day, but I'm sure to bring out at night to make myself feel really cozy as I'm getting ready for bed. All you're doing is signifying to your body that it's time to start winding down now and that it's okay to start winding down now. Because as a mom, we are so, f we're just go, 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 all the time. We're going, 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 always thinking. And having that physical change of attire, that physical feeling of change can help tell your body, all right, we're relaxing now. We're getting into that settling mode. That is key for promoting relaxation and a good night's sleep. And don't forget that temperature is important too. On a migraine night, you might want thicker PJs or you might want to adjust up your thermostat. If you hate having surprise migraine nights, migraine alert dog. Here's a video about mine. Step two, tidy up for a stress-free tomorrow. And I'm not talking about doing a whole house clean like we see on those crazy reels. I'm talking about doing just enough that it'll make a difference for your morning, but not enough that it's gonna come back to bite you. You understand? So put away items that may cause visual clutter or visual stress when you wake up. For me, that's my nightstand, first thing I see when I wake up, and also the kitchen because it's the first thing that I walk into when I go down the stairs in the morning. The way that our floor plan is laid out, you kind of like, you go in and you go around the corner and then it opens up to a great room that has the living room and the kitchen all connected. So having my nightstand clean and the kitchen clean in the morning helps with that visual clutter, the visual stress. Waking up to that kind of peace really does impact your mood and your mental well-being. The lighter morning load also leaves you more ready to face the day ahead. But if you're running out of spoons at this point in the bedtime routine, then it might be time to prioritize getting to the next steps. Oh good, I did film that. <laughs> Step four, are we on four? Step three in my bedtime routine is preparing a migraine-friendly snack. We all have migraine triggers, obviously avoid your migraine triggers. But for everyone, and especially those of us who get chronic migraines, it's really important for us to try to maintain stable blood sugar levels. So every night I do a full meal at around 9 p.m. so that I don't wake up absolutely starving at around 4 a.m. Right now I'm breastfeeding, so that makes a lot of sense, but even when I'm not breastfeeding, I suffer from a good bit of malabsorption. So I just don't absorb everything that I eat. I get very hungry very quickly. 
I'm not in the market for advice on this right now, thank you, because I'm already working on it. But for the sake of my bedtime routine right now, I do a big meal before bed. For most migraine people, it's recommended to just do a smaller snack if you need one and to prioritize protein. I'm hesitant to give recommendations for foods because everybody's a little bit different, but the things I see online tend to recommend things like nuts, yogurt, or a banana with nut butter. Again, working around your own sensitivities, triggers, and allergies. Talk to your doctor. Other good options for things to have at nighttime if you just need something in your stomach are sleepy time teas. I know I said I'm not going to talk about mocktails and cocktails and all that, but I do sometimes do a magnesium drink before bed if I didn't get to it earlier in the day because I actually prefer my magnesium in the late morning. Um, lost my train of thought again. Oh, and I actually I have a whole video about how I take my magnesium. And at the time that I made that video, I had not yet tried the chai, but I ended up trying the chai flavor and I loved it and I was putting it in my coffee all the way until I ran out of the bag. So I do recommend that drink that I was about to try when I filmed that video. Another great option for nighttime drinks are um, protein drinks. I do a protein shake most nights now because it's chocolatey and I'm hooked. I'm a creature of habit. So I get that protein boost in a milk that's safe for me. You know that I also sometimes have Huel at night, which is a complete meal replacement drink. So that's also an option. Something to keep that belly full. Okay, um, now just... Now I will foreshadow, just in case this helps you, steps four through six are a 20 to 30 minute relaxing time, followed by a break in the middle to do my bedtime productivity, and then another 20 to 30 minute relaxing time. Breaking up the routine like this keeps everything more manageable for me, for my stimulation levels, for my exhaustion levels at that point of the day, and I also have POTS. So it's difficult for me to stand up for too long, and adding the laying down breaks in between the tasks just helps me manage it better. My service dog does also help me with POTS, so here's a video about him doing service dog POTS tasks. And by the way, if this video in general, this topic, is helpful for you, please give the video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel, and consider subscribing. Thank you. I always feel so shy asking. Ah. Okay, so we're going to do a chunk, and then a productivity break, and then another chunk. Chunk number one is step number four, the real step number four this time, and that is and that is consuming the snacks, doing a little bit of light stretching, and then maybe some Netflix by Lamplight. I know it's a lot of details, but it's because we're doing a very short bedtime routine and packing in as much as we possibly can, while using as few spoons as possible. I know it's bad advice to eat in bed, but I do eat in bed because I like to. Right now with the kids, the kids sleeping, it's just nicer for me to be in a room where I know my noises aren't going to wake them up, so I go to my own bedroom. But find yourself a place where you like to relax and create a low sensory environment. Even if you don't feel like you need it to be low sensory right now, even if you feel like it's not a migraine day, treat yourself like the migraine patient that you are and dim those lights. Dim them. Lamp light. You might put on a little bit of calming music. You might use a light scent. I don't do that because I tend to light a candle later. But also keep in mind that doing those things might be too many sensory additions for you, and it might be a better idea to just turn everything off, shut everything down. My bedroom is also super muted tones of just whites and grays and beiges. We just keep it really mellow. Just try to keep it light, you know? And by light, I mean dark. A relaxed setting can make a significant difference for people who are prone to migraines. Then get into your activity. So what's the activity for this first chunk? I always like to watch a show before bed. Sometimes it's like a 20 minute show, sometimes it's like a 40 to 60 minute show. And this is where that built in flexibility for this bedtime routine is top notch, let me tell you. So if it's a night where I want to do a longer show, a 40 to 60 minute show, this is the time when I would start that show. It's not great for your eyes to watch TV before bed, but one thing you can do to minimize the blue light on your eyes is to watch TV indirectly by using a projector on the wall. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. I got mine for like 60 bucks or something. I can link mine or something similar below. But like, it's really fun. It's actually a much more fun way to watch TV. It feels super 90s and it's better for your eyes. It's better for your circadian rhythm because the wall is absorbing some of the blue light. During the first half of this longer show, the 40 to 60 minute show, I am also eating those snacks that I prepared 
and I am savoring them in ways that I don't get to savor them when the toddlers are around. I also incorporate gentle stretching before bedtime. So literally what this looks like is I'm sitting in bed, the foot of my bed has a bench that has the projector on it and the projector is on the wall. I have my snacks, I have my leg out, and I'm doing some stretches and just watching some TV by lamplight. After snacks, I have a flosser on my nightstand and I sit there and I chew on my flosser and it kind of is like a, it's like a fidget activity. I'm telling you, watch TV holding a flosser, you will inevitably floss the heck out of your teeth. Can you guys hear Buddy barking outside? Service dog by day, buffoon by night. Okay, so about halfway through that longer show, or whenever I feel like I'm done with my snacks and flossing, or whenever I'm done with the activity I did if it wasn't a show. Maybe I'm talking to my husband, I might do a Bible study, I'm in a couple of groups right now, I don't know, I might YouTube or doom scroll or whatever. When I'm done with that step four first chunk activity, it's time for the middle time break where I get back up and I do my productive bedtime routine stuff before I go and finally finish winding down for the night. Step five is my bathroom bedtime routine. And it's those simple daily hygienic things that are just absolute non-negotiables. So I do my final pee break. If I feel up for it, I brush my hair, but not always. I brush my teeth. I wash my face and then I do not apply lotion yet because now it's time for cephaly. At that point, the electrodes last much longer if you put them on a clean, dry forehead without any lotion on it. So after I wash my face, I skip the lotion, I take an electrode, pull it off of the backing, and use the mirror in the bathroom to apply it to my forehead where it goes. The device attaches with a magnet, super easy, and then you push it to start. One push does the acute setting, and two pushes with a pause in between does the prevent setting. Bedtime routine, two pushes with a pause. So one reason this rhythm works so well for me is because, well, 90s. I feel like this is the bedtime routine that I was raised on. We grew up with commercial breaks, and so my family had shows that we would watch before bed, and during the commercial break, we would run and go put on our jammies and then go back. Or the next commercial break, we would run and put on our PJs and come back. And I really love that this bedtime routine kind of simulates that pattern. I don't know, that's just me. I can't go straight from the bedtime stuff in the upright and just lay down and go to sleep. My mind's too busy at that point. I need some kind of mental something. I need a little bit more TV. I don't wanna be scrolling social media because it's too much dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. What we've been watching lately is alone and then we can stop whenever we want. But anyway, this is the point in my bedtime routine where I'm gonna be laying there for 20 minutes anyway. It is just too easy to not try cephaly at that point. If you want to decrease the number of migraine days that you have, you may as well try an FDA cleared way, non-prescription way that is proven to do that. So step six is chunk two of what I foreshadowed, which is the second 20 to 30 minutes of TV time. This is the point when I am in bed for the night, but I am not sleeping yet. Since I know I'm done walking for the day, I switch my lamp light to a candle. No joke, candle light every single night. And at that point, my service dog buddy is also laying right next to the bed with me. So I throw him a treat or a few to tell him, hey, good job. Thanks for being here with me, buddy. That's a very important part of the bedtime routine. I'm finishing the show. By the way, comment whatever show you guys are working on right now. Or if you're watching alone with me, let me know. On my shorter nights, we've been watching Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld right now. Okay, let's keep going. During this time block, I lay down, get completely relaxed. I'm flat and I'm doing my cephaly prevent treatment. I'm married, so I have my husband there with me. This is a good time for us to give each other massages for any tough spots we have. Don't be nasty. A lot of times we just end up cuddling and enjoying each other's company because it's hard to get time for stuff like that with the kids. And we might do a little bit more stretching there. Oh, and by the way, for the stretches, I prioritize my neck, my traps, and ever since having the kids, also my hips and my lower back. 
those seem to be the areas that are most helpful for preventing migraine. For me, those are the places where I store my tension. And finally, step seven, go the heck to sleep. Just kidding, a few more things. The Cephaly device has a 20 minute timer for the prevent setting. So once that 20 minutes is done, I pull it off, I take off the electrode and pack it up. And since I don't wanna get back up out of bed since I have pots, it's better to just stay flat once I'm flat. My face lotion is sitting on my nightstand and I can put on my face lotion right before I go to bed, blow out the candle and go to sleep. That's the end of our gentle nighttime routine for chronic migraine relief, including the use of Cephaly. If you're interested in trying out a Cephaly for yourself, use my link in the description below for 15% off. Until next time, take care, sleep well. Bye. I'm so awkward.